Hi Saviors, GH here. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look back at currently the second most popular build in the Swordsman Class 3 category, and it's Fencer, Matador, and Barbarian. We're gonna check out the skills, what they do, and tell you guys the reason why each of these classes are here in this build, the good and the bad, and some of my thoughts at the end of the video. And with that said, let's do this! Okay guys, here's Fencer, Matador, and Barbarian. Let's start with Barbarian. And Barbarian, as most of you know, is the class that you take if you want more damage, regardless of what weapon type you have. And that's the reason it's here, to get a buff called Frenzy. But of course, Barbarian has a variety of skills that will contribute to the overall performance of the build. But before those, let's check out the new arts for Barbarian. And first here is called Trance. And it's for the skill Pouncing. And what it does is double the attack range of Pouncing and disables the ability to move while using Pouncing. It's a good trade-off because the attack range is significant and it works well in mobbing. There's another barbarian art here called Leather Mastery Animal Instinct. And obviously, if you're wearing a leather armor set, you get up to a maximum of 2,500 attack depending on the transcendence of your weapon and arts level. Now, you're probably gonna ask, are you gonna wear leather? plate or cloth for me i always use leather as much as possible because damage is king in this game and i always just leave it up to the shield to protect my character because even if i use plate i will only be effective against physical damage and there are bosses in this game that uses magic attacks in the end i still couldn't protect myself from everything so i might as well go full leather set and get a badass shield to go along with it but if you're rich Get every kind of armor cause you will need everything. But if you're F2P, just go leather. The next skill is very vital and is the reason why we took Barbarian and the skill is called Frenzy. To keep it simple, after activating it, the more you hit, the more damage increase you get. If you stop hitting, the damage increase gets lowered as time passes. Next skill is War Cry. It's a buff and a debuff. It reduces enemy defense. And the more enemies inflicted with Warcry, the more damage increase you get. Last skill we're gonna show off here is Seism. It's a pretty decent AoE attack that stuns enemies. It has a fast cooldown of 15 seconds, so you're gonna be spamming this a lot. And that's Barbarian. Nothing much change, only new arts and reworked art. So yeah, Barbarian is still the damage boost and extra offensive abilities. Now let's head on to Matador. Now, Matador has undergone changes, and now its specific use is for boss fighting because most of its abilities are much more effective when fighting boss type enemies and also large type. Let's take a look at the skills and arts. Let's start with the skills with arts. First is Corrida Finale, the skill that summons a bull that pushes enemies and deals damage and increases damage if the target is large or boss type. Now. The art is called Raging Bull and what it does is make the bull leaves flames on its track and that flame will deal damage. Next skill is Boleta. To put it simply, it's a counter attack pose. When triggered, it will nullify the attack if it's physical melee damage and deals damage to the enemy and gives you increased damage to large and boss type monsters. And there's an art for Boleta called Faena and what it does is activate the skill Faena when Boleta is triggered. Now, Faena is a skill that deals a decent amount of damage and it can be used 3 times and it's connected to Muleta when you have the arts for Muleta. Cause as we've discussed, when you have the arts for Muleta and Muleta is triggered, the skill Faena will be used. Next skill is Ole. It's a buff that increases crit rate. When the enemy is a large or boss type, at max level it increases minimum crit rate by 40%. This means when fighting bosses, you don't need the crit rate stat anymore. Because 40% minimum crit rate is enough already. Next skill here is Capote. It's a Matador taunt that also reduces enemy crit resist. Then final Matador skill is Backslide. Gives you immunity to damage when the skill is active. And after that, it gives you a buff that reduces damage by 30% for 5 seconds. And that's Matador. IMC completely turned it into a boss fighting class, which is good in my opinion because the only time I see Matador 
is when we're fighting bosses. And now let's go on ahead to the last class, Fencer. Now, the Fencer class is a pierce type attacker that specializes on rapiers. And the reason it's here is because it works well with Matador. Because both of them enable the use of rapiers for their skills. Now, let's take a look at the Fencer skills, arts, and the new attributes. The new attribute is called Dagger. And what it does is converts 25% of your dagger's attack into physical attack. Now, this doesn't mean shield is dead because there will be bosses there that you just can't attack without a shield. But I can almost guarantee you that you will be wearing a dagger a lot. But for a safe measure, just carry a shield on your inventory. There's an art here called Parrying Dagger. And what it does is activates block when dagger is equipped. And when a block is successful, it will increase your damage by 30% for 3 seconds. And there it goes. Now you can block with a dagger. Next here is a skill called Eskid Touche. <laughs> Toucher. Yes sir, let's just call it Toucher. <laughs> it's a skill that deals a pretty decent amount of damage and has a short cooldown of 10 seconds. Now there's an art for this called Clean Dodge. And what it does, it evades all attack from the enemy when using Escape Touche. <laughs> Downside there is, it will double the cooldown. So, this art really depends on the person playing. Do you want evade all things? Or better cooldown for more damage? Next skill is Balestra Fente. This is one overpowered pierce type attack. That's it. And yeah, it also resets the cooldown of Backslide. Then here is Flash. Fletche. <laughs> a pierce type attack that inflicts 2 times the normal crit rate. Then Sep Eloils, an attack that ignores 15% of enemy defense. And since bosses at the moment has a lot of defense, this will be very useful. Next here is Epe Guard. Epe Garde. It's a skill that increases your critical damage but also removes the physical defense of your shield. Only physical defense. The magic defense of your shield will still work. And yes, it works with a dagger. Even without a dagger or a shield, it will work. Then last skill is called Preparation. It's a skill that you hold up and it will do a stance that will block attacks. And the longer you hold the Preparation skill, the higher the final damage buff you get. So make sure to charge it up. And that's Fencer. It's looking good to be honest. A lot of its abilities has a decent amount of damage. And the class also has damage buff that works well with all of the classes in this build. Now let's do the good and the bad. Let's start with the bad. But to be honest, there's not that much bad thing to say in this build. But there's a reason it's the number 2 swordsman build at the moment. Because it's good. I guess you could see this as a bad thing and it's the overwhelming focus on boss type monsters. What about the other types of enemies? Well, that ain't your job. Leave the mobbing to the other classes. That said, let's proceed with the good stuff. And of course, the build is excellent for boss fighting obviously. And also great in terms of versatility. Cause you could wear a shield if you think the boss will give you a hard time. And you can use a dagger if you wanna have more damage. And lastly, you have Matador here. That can make bosses bleed just by attacking them. And that means... You only need Prison Cutter card for your red cards. You don't even need Raja Pearl card anymore. And that, to me, is a very good thing. Because I always forget switching cards. All in all, I think IMC did a good job making an alternative build to the Blossom meta. Because Fencer, Matador, Barbarian is looking great at the moment. If I were to start out in the game as a Swordsman, Fencer, Matador, Barbarian is a really great choice. And that's it saviors, it's time for me to play. <laughs> but before that, let me ask you something. Which is stronger? Blossom Barbarian Dop or Fencer Matador Barbarian? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like the video, hit the thumbs up, share, and then subscribe to be part of the Gaming Hardcore family. And as always, this is Gaming Hardcore. See you in the next one.